I attended Dr. Joe Dispenza's seven days advanced meditation retreat and it was a mind-blowing experience. A lot of you have been asking me to give you a recap of what I learned over there. So starting today, today is day one experience from Dr. Joe Dispenza's retreat. But here is something important. Take a notepad, take a pen, make a lot of notes. What you're about to learn in this video is mind-blowing. This was one of the most powerful workshops that I've done in my entire life so far. I actually saw a stage four cancer disappear in one of the people over there right during the workshop. It was mind-blowing. I saw a 77-year-old lady who had not walked for more than seven years in her life. She was on a wheelchair on the sixth day of the meditation program with manifestation power. She walked for full three kilometers with me. I had tears of inspiration just looking at her walk with so much power. Before we begin the video, one more important point. At the end of that video, I have told my Platinum members that I'm going to share what I learned over there in the retreat. I will come back to India and I will do the meditations with them. I want you to know that is not something that I'm selling them. That is not something that I'm creating a course on. That is Dr. Joe Dispenza's program that I've learned. That is my experience that I'm going to share with my Platinum members, not as a way that I'm taking money from them because I'm not authorized to sell that content and I'm not going to create a program on that because that is Dr. Joe Dispenza's program, okay? So if you want to really learn this, make sure that you attend Dr. Joe Dispenza's retreat directly. I am sharing it with my Platinum members because they are my family. The way I'm going to share it with my friends, my family, Platinum is my family and that is why I'm going to do the meditations with them when I come back to India because I'm already doing a lot of such meditations, a lot of such amazing programs with Platinum members already. So this is just going to be a continuation. Okay, so don't get confused when I say that in the end of it. Now, let's begin. Take your notepad, take a pen and get ready for a mind-blowing experience and make sure that you subscribe to the channel right now and hit the bell icon because this is a five days video series. You will not get notification if you don't hit the subscribe button and don't hit the bell icon. Okay, let's get ready. Let's start. Good evening from my side in US day one of Dr. Joe Dispenza's workshop and good morning to all of you who are attending from India and some of you who are crazy people attending in US in the evening with me. Welcome back. I'm just giving you a quick download. I just finished the workshop, entered the room and connected with you on laptop and uh, giving you a little recap on what really happened day one. So you will be surprised that almost everything he taught us was something that is completely from India. It's all about Kundalini awakening. It's all about seven energy chakras. Uh, in fact, seven energy chakras, the way he explained was more science compared to what we do here is a little more mystical. Uh, in advanced law of traction, obviously we explain seven energy chakras much more scientifically, but they go a little different in the direction of seven energy chakras. He doesn't use the word chakras at all. He completely avoids using mysticism. He completely avoids using the word spirituality. In fact, the morning he said, do not use the word spiritual for anybody. Because the moment you say, I am spiritual, you have already divided the room between people who are spiritual and people who are not spiritual. So that was a good learning where he said, never say that you're spiritual. He said, the common language that I want you to use in this entire workshop is science. Is that science can be one language that everybody can relate to because it's not an identity. It is just a language that uh, we are learning scientifically what these uh, energy centers are. So instead of calling it chakras, calls it energy centers. Now, one of the best learnings that he gave was that most people are constantly vibrating at energy chakra one, two and three, energy center one, two and three, which means uh, your root chakra, your sacral chakra and your uh, solar plexus up till the navel. And he said, because we are constantly vibrating at these lower frequencies, we are always in fight flight mode. So you might want to write down always in flight flight mode, which means always in a reactive mode in life. So no matter how much we succeed, no matter how much money we make, a lot of people consider law of attraction only as a tool for uh, achieving goals in life. And that is what in a way we started with law of attraction in mind. But if you observe in advanced law of attraction also in relationship mastery also, we go much deeper and we say law of attraction is much beyond just achieving goals. It's about who you are. But he takes it another level where he beautifully explains that the first three chakras is where most of us live. 90 to 95 percent humanity lives there, including the richest people on the earth live at energy chakra one, two and three. It's not about the amount of money you make because it's level one, two and three. Manifestation happens at the materialization level. That's one. So you may still become a billionaire and yet you will vibrate at a lower frequency. What does that mean? So root chakra is about security and insecurity, correct? So that means a billionaire can also have insecurity. How many of you agree with that? 
at the same time your sacral chakra is about desires it's about change it's about adventure can a billionaire also feel that he has nothing and he still has desire to achieve constantly more yes or no yes so that's the second chakra the third chakra which is importance solar plexus is all about i i i uh, which is constantly feeling disconnected from the entire universe he explained and most of us are suffering in our life because we're constantly vibrating at security insecurity desire no desire so when we run behind desires for too long and we don't achieve our desires then for some time we give up and we say i don't want anything in life and that's when we start suffering and the importance need is when we use anger we get sad uh, because of our ego and then later we feel bad and we feel guilty so these are emotions he said connected to the solar plexus he said very few people are able to transcend to the chakras above and he said he shows us a beautiful method of meditation which he taught us today using which you can truly truly transcend your energy to the higher levels and he uh, invited six people on the stage to demonstrate that that technique and he says that right now as we explain in our workshops also right now we are all vibrating at beta frequency and then when you relax you go to alpha frequency then you go below that you go to theta frequency but he says if you truly truly go below you go to gamma frequency and gamma is where your third eye opens up in india we call it kundalini awakening uh, dr jot calls it pineal gland activation he says what really happens is the pineal gland which is right here it's not actually here or here the reason in india we call it third eye and the reason he says it here because scientifically uh, if you open the brain it's between this point and this point so it's in the center actually in in between this point okay but that's why most people either point it here in india and he calls it here he says if you at the center take a brain scan and you look at the pineal gland there are small small crystals over there and these crystals if activated uh, they create a negative positive charge like they start vibrating and if there is a negative positive charge what gets created a magnet correct now here's what happens he says there is a technique in how you can activate that pineal gland and here is the technique beautiful part is i've understood the technique much more powerfully than many people here because of thanks to my mentors who taught me that many years ago in different ways so kind of the whole knowledge has come back to me together now and here is the weird part i had a part of that kundalini experience today and it was mind blowing my body was vibrating like crazy i mean i'll i'll explain the whole my experience part of it but here is how it works he says you got to at the bottom of your root chakra which is their first energy center that is the part of your body uh, which we used to eliminate waste from our an anal right and from our sexual organ we use orgasm as a as as a release again that's elimination but during both the processes we squeeze that part of the muscle correct so he says you squeeze that muscle first so you breathe out and you squeeze that muscle and you hold it like right now you can do it at your just below your abdomen squeeze that part of your muscle which you do normally when you go to the washroom or when you're having sex you're basically squeezing that muscle he said now squeeze that muscle and then as you take a deep breath you squeeze that part and as you're taking a deep breath focus your entire attention on that part of your gland because where your energy where your focus goes your energy fo flows everyone clear about this where your focus goes energy flows so when you focus on that part of your body all the blood circulation goes there and you make it tight and then as you breathe slowly up you come towards the abdomen level right above the sexual organ is the abdomen level so imagine this now everyone bo hold both your hands like this so you're holding the sexual organ and now you're holding the sacral chakra which is the abdomen level and as you breathe in what comes up top solar plexus so now you hold up the solar plexus and you hold and now you continue breathing and you come to your chest on top now taking another hand you you squeeze up till here and there's a particular style he taught us where you take both your hands shoulders completely pushing down and when you push your shoulders down what happens is your your spinal cord straightens up try it like you push your shoulders down your spinal cord straightens up automatically correct now when your spinal cord straightens up and you're breathing in try this hands down straighten up and take a deep breath your chest will automatically come up your spinal cord automatically gets straight did you feel that now when that happens he says technically what's happening in the body is as your energy is flowing upwards in the spinal cord there's a fluid everybody must have learned it in school there's a fluid inside our spinal cord that literally starts pushing up 
okay because of your breathing up and it's breathing from your sexual organ from your sacral chakra which is your abdomen to your solar plexus and now through your chest and finally you come here and you take a deep breath and you focus your attention on the third eye and the pineal gland activation point and you take your breathing all the way till up but you do that and you hold and you hold and you hold and at one point you exhale he says when you do that in a particular style you hit that pineal gland crystal and it's this this fluid that's coming up from the uh, spinal cord watch what's happening first you squeezed at the bottom then you squeezed then you squeezed which way the energy is going to go tell me show me with your hands it's going to go upwards right he says this energy was coming from where at the bottom what is stored at the bottom guilt shame anger fear all these emotions which were stored for many 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 years in your bottom part of your body you've now squeezed it and you're breathing in you're going up 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 and it goes up through the fluid and that is the spinal cord fluid that hits your pineal gland activation and hits the crystals once it hits the crystals they start vibrating and as it starts vibrating it generates no negative positive charge negative positive charge is negative positive charge so yeah uh, right now don't do it jyoti because right now i haven't taught you the whole process so don't suddenly start doing anything uh, now once it vibrates at the negative positive charge it has created a magnet what is a magnet with two charges one negative side one positive so it's created a magnet then you exhale now when you exhale where does the energy go again everyone show me your hands going downwards so it goes downwards and then there is another negative positive charge downwards so what's happening here the energy goes down created another magnet energy comes up again because you're doing the same breathing technique one more time up and it goes up and down up and down in a particular style now he says the crystals start vibrating so powerfully that it becomes like a radio receiver and as you're activating this breathing the energy in every chakra starts rotating like this because that's what we call the chakra right now he didn't call it the chakra but we understand it's the chakra that starts rotating now when the chakra is rotating at full speed it creates a magnetic field around you which is what we call in india as what aura correct now that magnetic fields get stronger and stronger and stronger and you're rotating it upwards this time not downwards most of us are rotating it downwards he shall now you're rotating it upwards and it go back to the pineal gland activate it again down up down up and again this is a magnetic field so he says all your emotions are electrical charge and all your thoughts are magnetic charge combination is called as electromagnetic charge he says when you hit that again and again and again at one point the crystals will vibrate so powerfully that it releases a particular hormone which is found in electric eels anybody heard about electric eels they they have electricity coming out of so there are some snake type of eels in certain waters they have electricity generating through their body and that's like 440 volts of electricity have anybody heard about uh, animals like octopus can rebirth certain parts of their body again including octopus has the ability to even regrow their heart if their heart has been dead for some time the part of their brain can also regrow now that requires a certain chemical in their body it is the exact same chemical that is extracted in the body when your pineal gland is activated fully after these few breaths it's the same chemical that takes birth in your body same chemical and that chemical now starts healing every part of your body because it goes through your hormones and gives that particular chemical to every cell of your body and you remember i said right now we are at beta then we go to alpha then we go to theta when this gets activated now we are at what gamma frequency he says gamma frequency is so powerful it can heal every cell of your body in like this it's like a it's like an entire bath of your cells inside your body and anything that is negative poof just flushes out and in that moment you experience being nothing you experience being no one you experience being nowhere and that's the moment of divine experience that you go through which in our country we call as the kundalini experience he said in that moment you experience so much love that after that when you come back it's difficult for you to hate it's difficult for you to feel guilty it's difficult for you to feel bad it's difficult for you to judge other people and if you learn to go to that frequency again and again and again that what he calls is the field which we called as universe or in india we call it as bhagwan 
He says, when you're in that field and you manifest in that field, the amount of energy in that field is how much? Show me your hands. Humongous. So when you manifest something in that field, what is the chances of manifestation? 100%. And it just manifests. Boom. Because he says, creating matter requires energy. Write this down. Creating matter requires energy. What all of us are doing is we are creating matter to matter. Which means, we are working hard, matter, creating results, matter. So he says, matter to matter happens in the third dimension world. Third dimension means space and time. Example, you have a thought, I want to go there. Now, when you have a thought, I want to go there, what will you have to do? You'll have to take your body up, you'll have to go there, and then you reach there, right? As you're going there, you're passing space. Space means, the space means from here to there, there's a space and you're crossing it. As you're crossing it in space, you're also passing what? Time. So space and time. So third dimension world, which is what we live in, is always full of space and time. And it's a very lower vibrations frequency. In the space and time world, growth happens linear. Linear means first I'll do this, then I'll do this, then I'll do this, then I'll do this, and then years of success. Whereas he says in the fifth dimension or the fourth dimension world, so we talk about seven energy chakras, he talks about the eighth center. He says above the seventh goes to the universe, eighth energy center. And he says once you connect there, you're in the fourth dimension and above. He says in that dimension, there is no time, there is no space. And you can experience that when you activate the pineal gland and you're in that moment. And if you practice it every single day, every single day as a meditation, I mean, he says you're going to just take a shower in love every single day of your life. And he said things will manifest faster. You will manifest love faster because if you're vibrating at love, what will you attract? Love. And anything that is not love, what will happen to it? It will just move away from you automatically. Those people will move away. Those situations will move away. But for that, you got to be vibrating at love. And if you're vibrating at abundance, what will happen? Abundance will happen. And he said abundance will not happen in a linear way, which means not in space and time. It will happen magically, the way we call it in law of attraction. It will happen in ways that we don't know. He says if it's not happening in the way that you don't know, then you're not creating from the field because you're creating then from the linear. Linear means what? Known strategies. If I do this, then this will happen. If I do this, then this will happen. That's known strategies. What are unknown? I don't know how it will happen. How many of you remember rule number one of law of attraction? I don't know how it will happen. I don't know when it will happen. Just keep using it. That's what he means. Live in the unknown. Don't keep asking how it will happen. So many of those principles were the similar principles to what we learn. And then when he told us all this, he explained all this to us and he invited six people out of which one is a scientist. There is a scientist over there called Toby. He was also there today on the stage. Six of them were there and he got up in front of us on the stage and he said, now, don't get scared. These people are going to do the breath work, the breathing work, and they're going to go into gamma. And when they go into gamma, the body cannot handle those kind of vibrations. So the body will start vibrating. Some of them will faint. Some of them will go crazy. Some of them will shout. Don't get scared. <laughs> they are normal. They're just going through a perfect experience that they are supposed to go through at that particular Kundalini awakening point, which is not the word he uses. He uses pineal gland activation. And he called these people on the stage. He started some music. He told them to take a deep breath. And in one breath, boom, these guys went crazy. Like uh, six of them were there. One uh, just went like this. Like in India, how we say Mata Agai, one, one of them just got like this crazy. The, the second one was going up and down like this. Uh, the third just started crying out of joy and love. Uh, the fourth was just, and, and the Toby, who was the scientist, he was just moving like crazy, frenzy in just one breath. And they remained like this, moving their entire body for 10 minutes. Full 10 minutes, I clocked it. And for 10 minutes, they were having a divine experience. And we were 2,000 people looking at that and we couldn't believe what we were seeing. It was magical. And so th these guys, like what we trained in India, we were told that Kundalini experience takes 10 years and 20 years and you have to have a guru and this and that. Oof, these guys have done it in two, three weeks of experience. And after two, three weeks of experience, they can do it in one breath. Like they can just take a deep breath and boom, they're already there. And they're experiencing divine love. And by choice, he tells them, okay, now come back to this third dimension world and they come back. So in 10 minutes, when he said, come back, they slowly came back and they were completely peaceful. And they opened their eyes. So they were wearing blindfolds. 
they opened their eyes and they were completely normal again. And then we went and spoke to some of them in detail. We asked them what their experience was. And uh, every single one of them was just so kind, so loving. Every single one of them was willing to share their experience with us. So the reason he did all this experience with us first, it's called also pre-frame. Pre-frame means being able to give you the clarity of what's going to happen with you in advance so that you can even expect it. So after that, we took a break. After the break, we came back and we did that breathing exercise ourselves. Oh, in three minutes, I had tears in my eyes. And we did it three times in the day. All three times I cried. Because it was like there was a moment where there was so much love in the heart. It was uncontrollable. Like It was as if something was flowing through me. I just couldn't stop tears. And at one point, so in the first meditation experience, something crazy happened at one point. After the whole experience happened, I shaked, I had tears, and then at one point he tells us to calm down and breathe slowly again. I saw the eyes of a tiger. So clear. It's crazy. Like, I can't tell you how clear it was. It was as if the tiger was staring at me from two inches. And it was clear eyes. I have no idea why I saw that, but it was a vision. And, and it's not like recently I saw a tiger or I read about a tiger. Aisa kuch nahi tha. Then the second time, was even more crazy. The second time was where I could hear my brain talking like crazy. All kind of thoughts. All kind of thoughts. I was thinking about talking to Platinum members. I was talking about webinars and all kind of thoughts going on. And I was separate from it. I could see myself talking. I could see the brain working. And how many of you saw that movie Matrix? Where he can, Neo can finally see the Matrix. And Dr. Joe Dispenza had said that you can see the pattern. I could see the pattern. I could see the software at work in my brain and I was just so separate from it. I could just allow it to happen and not be bothered by it. That was my second experience. And right now, just before this, the third experience was even more profound. Uh, I heard my kaka who had expired about last year, similar time. I heard him so clear. I could swear he spoke to me. I could swear he, it was so real in that moment. He smiled and he came and he said, Bitter chinta mat kar, main theek hu pe. I was like, what? And there was a part of me freaking out and there's a part of me experiencing him and everything was happening in the same moment. Then I saw Angel uh, who died about a few months ago, my small bird. Angel had such huge wings. She came around me and she put two wings around me from above. That's the time I cried like crazy. It was beautiful. It was surreal. Like It's difficult to even explain. Such beautiful experiences happened. And then after that, everything just calmed down. And at one point, how many of you remember this book called uh, Autobiography of a Yogi by Parmanan Sal? Anybody's heard about that book? I read that book 20 years ago. I have not seen that book ever since. And that book, the author is also called as Babaji. Believe it, I have not seen his face for 20 years. I saw his face in that day. And the face was crystal clear. Okay, here it is. That's the book. That's the book. That's right, Shiva. I saw this face so clear and I have not seen this book for so many years. And I knew it was him. Like, I knew it was him. It was a beautiful experience. So that was what I experienced in the end of it. And uh, the idea is keep doing meditation every day. But until today, I really never thought meditation was more than a tool to be peaceful. But now we understand there's a reason to meditate. There's a reason to meditate for two things. One, because obviously your manifestation gets stronger. But two, you start vibrating at your higher frequencies of your heart, your throat, your, your seventh chakra, your third eye, your eighth chakra. And he says, if you practice enough for a few months, you start accessing the next dimension and you start experiencing extraterrestrial beings who come and communicate with you. You can talk to them, you can communicate to them. He also shared that sometimes those extraterrestrial beings, they actually come to this room and he's able to communicate with them, by the way. Imagine this is a doctor saying all this, okay? Who's doing research, who's doing sitting there with scientists. He's saying all this. He's saying these extraterrestrial beings, they come to this conference hall and they told him that we can only come to this earth until a certain frequency, below that frequency, if we come, we'll get stuck here. 
So the only time we can really communicate with you is when you all vibrate at a higher frequency together. So he said, together when we all breathe like this and we all activate the pineal gland at 2000 people at such a stretch, he says the room vibrations go crazy up, like beyond gamma. And that time these extraterrestrial beings, they're able to communicate and they heal people magically. And he shared a story with us about a lady who had gone blind. She got eyes in the session. There was a lady who had tumor. Her brain tumor just disappeared because these people come and they just heal us. And he says almost all these healings happen on the seventh day, mostly. He says he doesn't know why, but mostly it happens on the seventh day. So to do more research, what he's doing now is he's doing the advanced retreat, which is happening the second level after this, called up the follow-up advanced retreat for 10 days. This is seven days. So he's doing 10 days just to know what happens after the seventh day. Uh, so just for you to know, yes, I am going for the 10 days retreat. What I did today, I felt, forget about whether meditation is necessary. From today onwards, if I don't meditate, I'm stupid. Like I'm just stupid if I don't meditate. It's like not brushing your teeth. It's like not wearing your clothes. It's just not acceptable. Like if you're going to living on this earth, there are some basic things that you're going to do, like brushing your teeth, wearing your clothes. How many of you agree with that? Just like that, I think this science of meditating and vibrating at a higher frequency has just to be our part of lifestyle. How many of you agree? Okay. So that was day one. That was my experience. And I told you most of it. I had tears of joy many, many times in the program, listening to their stories, listening to their transformations. And it was beautiful. And the science and the mysticism and everything came back together. Did you love that day one experience of Dr. Joe Dispenza's retreat? I was just in love with this man and the kind of experience he gave me. Just wait for the video two. The day two was even better. The day three, even more mind-blowing. On the day three, I thought, okay, now I've learned everything. Day four was even better. Day five, day six, my mind was wrong. So make sure that you follow every single day, okay? But listen, did you love what you learned about the pineal gland activation in the video today? Did you love about what you learned about the seven chakras? How in India, we've been talking about Kundalini awakening for so many years. But for the first time, I understood the science about it. And believe me, I experienced Kundalini awakening. I actually experienced what he calls pineal gland activation. And you heard me saying in the video, it was a mind-blowing experience. You will hear more about my experiences in day two video. Look forward to it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel right now and hit the bell icon. So whenever I release it, it's going to be in the next one or two days. You'll definitely get a notification. Keep following the channel. Okay. And hey, do share your comments in the comment section below. I want to know what did you learn? I want to know how was this experience for you? And if you plan to go and attend Dr. Joe Dispenza's program, let me also know that about in the comment section below. Okay. See you. Take care. Bye-bye.